Hi, my name is Paul Brosesen, and this video is a quick preview of one of the videos you'll find in my upcoming course called Python States for Houdini TDs. In the video, you'll probably see some terms and you'll see some code that you might not understand that I'll be skipping over. That is simply because this video is from one of the last chapters in the course, uh, which specifically talks about undos. This topic, however, is something that's not very extensively documented in the documentation for Houdini. So I wanted to put this video out there just as a quick preview of what you'll learn in the course. Good luck. So now that we've learned how to add support for undo in general, I promised I would look at a more advanced example. So we've learned how to use the undo.disabler, which allows us to disable certain activities that modify, for example, the user interface to be recorded in the undo stack. We have learned how to wrap series of interactions into an undo block using uh, sceneviewer.beginStateUndo as well as sceneviewer.endStateUndo, which we would use if, for example, we want to start recording while doing something in a certain event callback and end it in, for example, a different location without knowing specifically how long we want the recording to take. We've also learned how to wrap serial statements in an undo block. For example, if we're calling several lines of code, uh, creating nodes, moving nodes, and other things that modify the interface uh, in serial like this, uh, to record them into a single block. But there are other things that we can do in Houdini that are not recorded in the undo stack. For example, when we have a drawable and we're updating our drawable uh, based on some action, that is something that the undo system in Houdini doesn't know anything about, right? It's an action that you're doing yourself without telling the who.undo system what it is you're doing. So that also means that those steps do not get recorded and would not, you know, undo and redo when you, you know, press control Z or control Y. Another example is, for example, if you add some sort of QT elements on top of your parameter interface on top of the viewport and modify those using user interactions. That is once again, also something that happens in a different system than Houdini's core undo system. So how do we record those types of actions if we can't use these actions here? Well, Houdini has something called the who.undos module, which allows us to record our very own undo operations. And the way we can do that is simply call who.undos.add. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to define our own class, right? For example, my undo class, and in it store information that we want the undo or redo action to record. Additionally, this class that we can define needs to have these two methods, the undo and the redo method. And the name already suggests what it does when we undo something, it is going to call this method here. If we redo something, it is going to call this method here. So let's take a look at our uh, viewer state class that we've created for this example and look at what it does. So when we enter our viewer state, we'll see that we have a red drawable show up. When we right click, we can have our context menu where we see shape selection and then we see uh, you know, some vectors here defining the shape of this drawable that we can do. Additionally, you can see that we've also bound some hotkeys to our context menu. These are both things that we've learned in the chapter about context menus. So I'm not going to cover too much about how these are set up. But I will, however, show you that when we modify these uh, drawables that we see here, right? So for example, if we enter a state and press undo now, we'll see that it said undid move items, which is moving this node here. We did not undo do the drawable, right? Which means that it is not being recorded by Houdini in the undo stack, or at least not automatically. So let's take a look at the Python code and see how this state is set up thus far. So to begin with, we have defined this uh, function here called generate box drawable, which takes in an argument called size. And inside of it, we're simply using a subverb to construct a box with the size of the argument that's being passed in and it returns a who.geometry object with a box of the size that we specified. Then of course, in our state object, right, our viewer state, we have a geometry drawable that we have constructed inside of the scene viewer of type drawable geometry.face, right, which gives it that shaded look. 
And we have also told it that the parameters should simply color the geometry red, right? Like we've seen here. Then in on enter, we of course pass in our geometry to the set geometry uh, method of the drawable itself using that function that we just looked at. And by default, we're gonna create a box of size one. Then important, we're gonna show our drawable, right? So that we can actually see it in the viewport. And then in the on draw event callback, we tell it to draw the drawable every frame when the viewport gets dirtied by, for example, moving the mouse. Then for the context menu that we saw, we have bound a uh, radio strip menu like this, right? We have defined a couple of options as well as a couple of hotkeys that we've bound. Once again, this is something we've learned in the context menus chapter. Uh, but when we press the key three, for example, uh, we call this radio strip item menu, which sets that radio strip to be a value three. Once that happens, of course, we get this callback being called the on menu action, which is going to check what it is that we modified in our context menu, right? By, for example, pressing a hotkey or by pressing it manually. And we set this variable called size to the correct integer value, right? Corresponding to the hotkey value that we had. And then we just update the drawable using some new geometry that we generate using the now new size. And then we tell the viewport to redraw. So nothing fancy going on, uh, fairly straightforward Python state, uh, nothing more complex than we've built so far. Um, but we have a problem like we saw, right? We want this to be recorded in the undo stack. So how can we do that? Uh, we could either record it here in the on key transit event, uh, for this specific example, but that wouldn't be very smart because then we would only have it be recorded if we press the key, right, that we've bound, which just happens to also be a hotkey, which means that if we use the context menu, this would not be recorded in the undo stack. So let's see, where else could we put it in? We could put it in the uh, on the menu action. Would this be a good place to put it in? I think so, uh, because when we right click on our context menu and select one of these options, obviously the on menu callback is going to get called. But when we press one of the hotkeys, it is also going to set and update this radio strip button menu, which means it is also going to call this code. So I believe that this is a good area to put our undo um, stack, right? Or rather our, our custom undo recordings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna insert a comment here saying uh, record custom undo. Okay, let's make some space here so that we can properly type some code. And let's take a look at the documentation that we just looked at for the who.undos module. So what we can do is we can call who.undos.add. And uh, what that allows us to do is create our very own variable containing an object with data that we pass into it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this code here, right, from the uh, class object. You could of course also type it yourself, but to save some time, we're just gonna copy it. And we're gonna place that outside of our viewer state. And to initialize this class properly and have it record the data that we need, we of course need to pass in a couple of arguments when initializing it. So what would we like to record in our undo stack? Well, it would make sense to of course record the size that we set our drawable to. And we also need to pass in the parent. And what does parent refer to in this case? Well, since we will want to be able to update the drawable, right, which lives in a different uh, object, right, our viewer state object, we need to pass in what that viewer state object is, because this class that we just defined here does not contain the drawable that we want to update. So parent is going to let us refer back to the viewer state object, including its geometry drawables and all other properties contained within. So to store these two variables here, what we're going to do is we're going to say self.size equals size, and we're going to say self.parent equals parent. So now when we initialize uh, an object of this uh, class, we will have within it information about the size and the parent, which refers to the viewer state object that we referred to. Then let's take a look at these two methods, the undo and the redo method. Now this comment here already describes what it does, uh, add in what needs to be done on undo and redo, add in what needs to be done on redo. So when we press control Z and we have added this object to our undo stack, it is going to call this method here, undo. When we press control Y, it is going to, of course, redo the previous operation, which means it's going to call this function here. So what this allows us to do is define custom code that we need to run whenever we undo or redo something. 
in the case that we've recorded the undo step using our custom object. So how do we record our custom undo or create the variable? Well, we of course are going to say undo equals, and then we're gonna say my undo class. And what is it that we need to pass in? Well, we of course need to pass in size, right? Which is that uh, variable here that we've, uh, we've initialized properly based on the uh, context menu or the hotkey that we've pressed. But we also need to pass in the parent, which like I said before, refers to the viewer state object. And so what is that object? Well, in our case, since we are inside the viewer state object, that is simply self. So to record the actual undo, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say who.undos.add, and then we're gonna pass in our undo. And then we can also pass in a label. And this label allows us to specify the text that we will see in the bottom left of our status bar. And so what we can do is we can say, uh, for example, update, uh, update um, geometry drawable, like that. We could, of course, also tell it, you know, hello, mom, or whatever it is we want to put in there. But ideally, it is something descriptive that, you know, we want uh, the, the status bar to tell us. Okay, so now that we have added our custom undo object, we, of course, need to tell the undo class what it is that it needs to do. So since whenever we update our uh, drawable, we call these two lines, right? We could generate a new box and we also update the viewport by drawing it. I think this would be two lines of code that we would also need to call in our undo and our redo methods. So let's do that. Let's pass these two in here and fix this so that it actually works within this class. Self, referring to this class object here, of course, does not have a geometry drawable. But thankfully, since we pass in the parent, we can simply say self.parent.geodrawable.setGeometry. So now this is going to call uh, onto the geometry drawable living in our state viewer, right? Or the, the uh, viewer state. Then generate box drawable is properly configured here and size, of course, uh, needs to also refer to self.size. So let's do that. Let's pass this self.size. And let's take a look at the next line, self.sceneViewer. This object does not have a scene viewer. The parent has a scene viewer. So we're also going to say self.parent.sceneViewer.currentViewport.draw. So now we have these, the geometry draw will properly update and redraw the viewport when we undo something. But when we redo something, it doesn't quite do anything yet. So to fix that, in our case, very simple. We simply wanted to do the exact same thing as when we redo. And by hitting save, we should now have a proper undo and redo method implemented for our custom undo object. Okay, let's verify that our code in the uh, on menu action is correct. We create our object here, passing in size and self, and then we add it to the who.undos. So let's hit save and go into the viewer state and check out whether or not that worked. So we're gonna press uh, two, we're gonna press three, and we're gonna press four. And now when we press control Z, let's see what happens. Control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Y, control Y, control Y, control Y, control Y. And as we can see, we properly get an undo and a redo happening for our custom actions. And that's it. That's how you can implement custom code to be called when you undo and redo something, right? Uh, you cannot, for example, redraw the viewport or uh, update the scene viewer or whatever else you want to do uh, using these methods if it is not being recorded by the undo stack of Houdini. So this is how you do it yourself.